Hello, today we have uh, chapter six, the lessons of love, section three, the relinquishment of attack. Okay, paragraph one. As we have already emphasized, every idea begins in the mind of the thinker. Therefore, what extends from the mind is still in it, and from what it extends, it knows itself. The word knows is correct here because the Holy Spirit still holds knowledge safe in your mind through his impartial perception. By attacking nothing, he presents no barrier to, co- to the communication of God. Therefore, being is never threatened. Your godlike mind can never be defiled. The ego never was and never will be part of it. But through the ego, you can hear and teach and learn what is not true. You have taught yourself to believe that you are not what you are. You cannot teach what you have not learned. And what you teach, you strengthen in yourself because you are sharing it. Every lesson you teach, you are learning. So what stands out here is by attacking nothing, he, the Holy Spirit, presents no barrier to the communication of God. So we are spirit, and spirit attacks nothing. So the reality of us, spirit, is that we have never attacked anything. And what we truly are presents no barrier to the direct communication of God. What we imagine ourselves and others to be is the block that covers up what is real. So by attacking nothing, Holy Spirit presents no barrier to the communication of God. So it's a reorientation toward what we are. And elsewhere in the Course, it says that when you are thinking with an ego, your mind is actually blank. Those aren't my true thoughts. Those aren't really anything at all. They don't even have existence. (laughs) The mind can imagine, but imagination isn't real. And when I put my focus back on Holy Spirit, I'm focusing toward what is real. And then I'm allowing guidance through and out of the dream of conflict and strife. Okay, paragraph two. That is why you must teach only one sin. If you are to be conflict-free yourself, you must learn only from the Holy Spirit and teach only by Him. You are only love, but when you deny this, you make what you are something you must learn to remember. I said before the message, um, before that the message of the crucifixion was, teach only love, for that is what you are. This is the one lesson that is perfectly unified because it is the only lesson that is one. Only by teaching it can you learn it. As you teach, so will you learn. If that is true, and it is true indeed, do not forget that what you teach is teaching you, and what you project or extend, you believe. So what you project or extend, you believe. And our feelings tell us when we're projecting. (laughs) That is why I need to pay close attention to feeling, to be aware of when I've gone into tension. It's more like gone into deeper tension because there's this fundamental tension involved in holding up oneself as a separate character, as a separate body with a life story. There's this fundamental tension encompassing all of that but we go deeper and deeper and deeper into this tension we're holding and allow ourselves to relax out of it and to notice what's real and what isn't real what you project or extend you believe so when I'm at the level where I am joined with you eternally because we're one when I'm paying attention there, that's extension. I'm understanding that only love is real, that I am love, that you are love, 
And yes, in phenomenality and time and space, we can see many different things and, and the ego will give us meanings and values and judgments for all these different things. But at the end of the day, reality is reality. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. What you project or extend, you believe. So if I'm in a state of tension, I am projecting. I can look at the thoughts I believe when I'm tense. And that is what I believe currently. That doesn't have to continue. This is where Holy Spirit can come in and correct our perception. So when I'm projecting and I notice I'm believing thoughts from ego, Holy Spirit can come in and correct our perception. And then we notice we're resting in love. And that love extends forever. Our perception changes as we allow ourselves to be shown what's real, and as we allow ourselves to remember that what we made up is unreal. What you project or extend, you believe. Okay, paragraph three. The only safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit because as you see His gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. Once it can accept this fully, it sees no need to protect itself. The protection of God then dawns upon it, assuring it that it is perfectly safe forever. The perfectly safe are wholly benign. They bless because they know that they are blessed. Without anxiety, the mind is wholly kind. And because it extends beneficence, it is beneficent. Safety is the complete relinquishment of attack. No compromise is possible in this. Teach attack in any form, and you have learned it, and it will hurt you. Yet this learning is not immortal, and you can unlearn it by not teaching it. Okay, the only safety. The only safety! <laughs> There's only one kind of safety, and this is it? Okay, let's, let's learn about this. The only safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit, because as you see His gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. So as I am walking through this experience, and I see characters, and I believe I can say what they are, it might help me to remember that our shared mind is wholly gentle. So if I'm seeing another mind in you, I'm definitely projecting and projection is painful and brings on the perception of harm and harming. So instead, if I remember that your mind is gentle, my mind is gentle and we share that mind, then I allow Holy Spirit to show me a reflection of that. Then I can experience it. What we believe, we experience. And it doesn't matter what the past seems to be. It doesn't matter all the things my ego has said about you in the past. You are gentleness. Why? Because there is one being and it is gentle. So that's more important to remember than anything for the from the past that I would attempt to use as a defense. The only safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit because as you see His gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. So once I can see the harmlessness in you, the truth, instead of um, a memory of anything in you that would be contrary to gentleness that I keep remanufacturing and remanufacturing as a defense of separate selves, keeping them separate. As I see the harmless and the gentle in you, then I'm able to perceive myself as totally harmless. If you are part of me and I don't see you as, as you actually are, forget about the character and the body and the person and the past and the personality and all the, forget that. <laughs> Just you as you truly are. 
as you truly are. If I can't see what's true about you right now, how could I possibly see what's true about me? Because we are the same being. So yeah, I find that very helpful. The only safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit because as you see his gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. Okay, paragraph four, and it's the last one. It's a short section. Since you cannot not teach, your salvation lies in teaching the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. This is how you will learn the truth that will set you free and will keep you free as others learn it of you. The only way to have peace is to teach peace. By teaching peace, you must learn it yourself, because you cannot teach what you still dissociate. Only thus can you win back the knowledge that you threw away. An idea that you share, you must have. It awakens in your mind through the conviction of teaching it. Everything you teach, you are learning. Teach only love, and learn that love is yours, and you are love. Since you cannot not teach, your salvation lies in teaching the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. And what's a day for? It's to notice what the ego believes. And how do I notice what the ego believes? I can't notice unless my primary attention is on how I feel, not how you feel, how I feel. I have to say this to myself because of false empathy, of um, promoting anxiety in myself, anxiety about how others feel and trying to set things right. Um, worthless and a failure <laughs> every time. It leads to people pleasing. And it's, so if I put my primary attention on how I feel, then I know when I'm projecting from ego and shooting out a false surface upon you that covers up your harmlessness and your gentleness, the actual true nature of you. No matter what my ego fear blanket my ego has tried to cover you up with before, <laughs> I can see you as you are now if I, my primary attention is on how I feel, not an analysis of the drama I made up, <laughs> not that, not looking at the past, not anticipating a future. How do I feel right now? If it's not good, and it's interesting to see how often it is not good because there's this subtle underlying tension that powers the idea that I am a body and I can be harmed and I'm separate from you. So in that sense, I never feel good. <laughs> and then from there, from there, I can see, okay, so ego gives us a back and forth. Sometimes you're happy. Sometimes you're not happy. Sometimes you're satisfied. Sometimes you're not satisfied. And you try to get to the point where you're satisfied most of the time. But the thing is, is that ego's happiness isn't happiness. It's just the opposite to not happiness. They're both fake. That's when we can get to, oh, there's joy. Underneath all of this, there's joy. That's my true nature. That's your true nature. I don't have to worry about you if I know your true nature's joy. And if I'm willing to pause and look at you for a moment and not accept any story about you that the ego's telling. So again, my, my primary attention has to be on how I feel. And then I can see when I'm projecting on you. And then I can relax into what we are. And I can teach the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. When I relax into what we are, and I allow thought to be provided by spirit, for example, my body is a wholly neutral thing, <laughs> when I allow myself to relax into that, then I'm not throwing a fear blanket on you anymore. Then I am teaching the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. 
that we're separate, that there are separate things, that the separate things and separate people are out to attack us, that we need defenses, that we're capable of judging and analyzing people and places and things, that we should remember the past and we should anticipate the future. <laughs> many, many, many things. When I focus on what's real, I drop out of that. Since you cannot not teach, your salvation lies in teaching the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. And this is a power we all share. Everyone can teach the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. And when I see you as you are, and I'm not projecting on you and throwing a fear blanket on you, full of egoic thoughts all about you and what I think you are and analyzing and judging you and placing you in relationship to many other separate things. Complicated, complicated. When I see the simplicity of who you are, I see that power in you to teach the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. So that's what a day is for. It's for teaching the exact opposite of everything the ego believes. <laughs> Okay, that's straightforward. All right, thank you. Wishing you happy healing.